My lords, ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to Transport Fever 2. We're currently starting in Revelstoke at the station that we constructed a few episodes ago. And before I actually get started with the episode, I just want to answer one of the comments that was made on the previous episode regarding these two tra uh, truck stations that we have to deliver the goods into Revelstoke that get dropped off at our train station. Now, as Marshalls correctly pointed out in the comments on the last video, this truck station here is not large enough to handle the full amount of goods that the train is going to drop off on a full load. Now Marshalls, you are absolutely right, indeed it is not large enough and some of the goods that are delivered are going to be wasted as this platform is too small. However, given the terrain constraints in the area, I wasn't able to get a large enough platform in to handle the full amount of goods. So. I had to settle for a little bit of wastage and inefficiency, however in the future what we may do is look to rework these somewhat and see if we can't fit in some larger platforms to ensure that nothing gets wasted. So I am aware of it but for the time being I am prepared to live with it but as I said in the future it may be a case that we look to change it around so nothing gets wasted. Now another comment that was left on the previous video is uh, pointing out that in reality over here in field there is actually a spiral rail tunnel. Now I had noticed that because I've been looking at open street maps uh, not as a not to copy and as, as a recreation but just as a guide just so I got a rough idea as to where things are in real life and where the stations are and whatnot. Now I did off camera before I did this work here in field, I did try for a spiral, uh, a spiral tunnel but I just wasn't able to make it fit quite right so in the end that's why we've gone for this field tunnel bypass here. So while it would be nice to have the spiral tunnel put in as coal smoke indicated in the comments on the previous video, as I said I just wasn't able to get it to fit right to how I wanted it so I had to unfortunately just ignore that and uh, carry on with a straight tunnel straight through and leave field without a station. Now back to today's episode we're going to continue our efforts in Revelstoke and what we're going to do today is take this line here that runs off into the tunnel and we're going to extend the passenger line down towards Galena Bay. That seems the natural next stop on our rail system. Now as you can see we've extended the tunnel so far but it doesn't actually go much further than the mouth of the tunnel and I just did that as a guide as to where we're going to be headed next. So what we're going to do, we're going to pick it up from there, we're going to follow the Columbia River down here and I think we'll probably put our station for Galena Bay on this little corner here because the terrain here is quite flat and we could put in a station quite easily. Now for Shelter Bay, what I'm going to do and what I'm planning to do is just have a bus service that runs in the inner city of Shelter Bay, kind of like this loop here. And then I'll have a connection bus over a bridge over the Columbia River to Galena Bay. And then we'll have a bus that runs through Galena Bay up to the station here. So the residents of Shelter Bay, they can access this station, but they will have to take the bus to get over here. I think that's the solution I'm going for with Shelter Bay. So all that being said, let's get started. So we're going to want a station here in Galena Bay. Now I think we can get away with just a two platform station. The idea being we're gonna have one platform feeding from Revelstoke and then perhaps heading onwards following the course of the Columbia River down to Nacusp. And another platform is going to head into the Rocky Mountains once again towards Trout Lake and Argenta over there. We'll keep it 120 meters, it doesn't need to be too much longer than that for the time being. I can't imagine even in the future we'll have very long trains running on this section of the network. So we'll save space where we can and just have a 120 meter station and as I said we'll just pop it on that radius there and then we'll have tracks heading up towards Revelstoke, one towards Trout Lake and then one down towards Nacusp that way. 
Now the primary focus is obviously going to be connecting it into our primary network, which is obviously Revelstoke. So we'll do that first of all before we do anything else. So we'll start off flat. That gives us plenty of nice terrain to work with in terms of crossovers. And then we'll just take these tracks and as I said, we'll follow the side of the river here and then we'll head upwards and connect into our waiting tracks just there. Now this should be a quite a scenic little train line actually following the course of the Columbia River. Obviously you've got the Rocky Mountains on either side and then you've got the, uh, the waters flow just on your immediate left as well as you're heading up. And this little forested area as well will also add to the scenery. Of course, from time to time, you'll see one of our ferry services heading up and down the Columbia River. So, in terms of a, a train ride and following along, it should be very pleasant indeed to hop aboard this train once we get it up and running. Now, I don't want to keep flat the entire time because the tracks that we have at Revelstoke, they are elevated up from the water's edge. So we do need to start climbing. We don't want to leave ourselves too short with too much to do as we get close to Revelstoke. So we'll start bringing our track up now. Ideally, however, we probably don't want that much elevation or that much gradient, I suppose I should say because we don't want our trains to have too much of a hard time when they're heading back towards Revelstoke. Obviously heading from Revelstoke to Galena Bay will be easy because it's downhill and they have gravity on their side. But heading back, we don't want to give them too much work to do. Now is that connected on correctly? It has. How does it look in terms of the elevation? It is quite steep, but it's not as bad as it could be, so I'll take that. And I think for a first try, that's not too bad. And then we'll just connect the second track in there as well. And then we just want to put a couple of signals down. Now I'm going to have to put some in the tunnel there, which I don't like to do, as you know. But as a cheap solution for now, I'm going to have to live with it. I'm not going to need too many blocks along this stretch, because in terms of train volume, we're not going to have more than, at, you know, at the most, I'd say, two running along this little track here. And indeed, that means there's probably an argument that this does not need to be double tracked. And we could get away with a single track along here, but we've got it double tracked for now, so we'll live with it. So there we go. So that's a connection now between these two places. Before we assign a train line, however, what we want to do is get the bus line sorted that I was mentioning where we'd have one just for Galena Bay, a connection between Galena and Shelter Bay and then one for Shelter Bay. Obviously the one in Galena Bay will incorporate a stop at the station here as well so the passengers can actually make use of this train station that we've just provided. So to facilitate that I'm just going to put a quick loop, if I use a curve tool that will make a better loop, yes we'll put a quick loop just there. That enables our buses to turn around naturally and normally before heading back into town. And then we just want to go ahead and put a few bus stops in along the streets of Galena Bay. Obviously we're going to want one outside of the station. And then we'll have the bus come back into town. And we'll have it run along the waterfront on its way in. We'll have a stop. In fact, yes, that's fine and then it can just run back along the top edge of town and from that point there it will head to the stop at the station. So we'll get this set up now, we'll choose a colour straight away, we'll have this sort of mint green I suppose you would call it and then we'll get the bus line set up, it's going to be a very easy system that but it should be more than enough for what we need it to do. So there's the line, bus service Galena Bay, that's all good. We'll need a depot of course, so we'll purchase a road depot and we'll just pop it just there and we will have a direct connection which is something I try and avoid, but given we're not going to have much traffic down here, the traffic lights that eventually appear aren't going to cause us too many issues. And then we'll get a handful of buses and I think five is going to be more than enough for this. 
and then we can assign them to their route. Now the next thing we want to do is have a bridge over the Columbia River to connect the two towns on either side of the river, so we'll do that now. And for this we want our straight rope tool and we'll just go straight across like that. Mm, perhaps not, it's rising a little bit too much, how's that? And we'll give it a little arch back as well. I mean, there is plenty of clearance for our ships already. But I like to have a little hump in the bridge. And then we can just connect that in to the road network in Shelter Bay. Sorry, Galena Bay. And it is quite a climb up there, now that I've noticed that. So what I might do is just get rid of that and that road there. And before they rebuild, put a manual road connection in and that keeps it a lot smoother. There we go. So now what we can do is we'll put the bus service in for Shelter Bay and much like its counterpart over the river, it's just gonna be a simple loop along the river's edge and then along the top of town. Obviously along the river's edge we'll incorporate our ferry terminal as well. Hopefully that will promote some usage of that. And then along the top of town, it's going to be quick and simple, like so. A nice, easy loop there. Okay, let's get this assigned and set up. And this can have a nice pink colour for something a little bit different. And we will head just like this. Nice and easy. There we go. I'm just going to rename this station here to Harbour Lane. Just so when I'm checking the passenger destinations at the stops, I know exactly where they're going or if they are going through the harbour itself. That's fine. Anyway, let's get some buses for this line. Again, we'll probably need no more than five. And in fact, if I'm honest, five is probably too many. That's that. And now the last thing you want to do is get the little connection over this bridge here there is no overlap between our nearest stations on opposite sides of the river so we want to give them the chance to cross the river and I think what we'll do here how we will how do I want to get this set up I think what I will do is something like this first of all we'll set a color and we'll have a nice green I think and we'll go from Harbour Lane up here along here and then into this stop there but I don't want to swamp this station here especially when passengers are disembarking the ferry so perhaps instead of Harbour Lane we'll use this one so we're going to come from East Street and then back over the river and into Franklin Street and then what we can do is we can have a waypoint down here so instead of doing a u-turn on the road to get to the station we will instead head down this loop here I think that might be the best solution so we'll put the waypoint there go back to the line and after Franklin sorry East Street we want to go there I think that will work a lot better and this will be the bus service I'll just call it Shelter Galena we're gonna know what it's for and that should be okay and for this service I think just two buses is gonna be more than enough okay that's that taken care of there's our connections in and around Shelter Bay as we can see in Shelter Bay, we already have some passenger pickups straight away. So you're heading to the harbour. You're heading to 8th Street, which is that one there. So we've got a bit of uptake for the harbour, so that might see quite a few more passengers being produced for our ferry service, which would be great. But in the meantime, what we want to do now is get a line set up from Galena Bay to Revelstoke so we'll do that nice and quickly so you want to go from there to there in terms of line colours let's just have a look what we have already in this area 
and we want something that's quite contrasting so it stands out nice and easily perhaps a yellow ah yes I think that will do intercity shuttle is what we're calling them I can see it just there Revelstoke Mica there we go so that's our connection line set up to Galena Bay now we are going to want to train for that as well and I think what I'm going to do at this point is actually get a depot in this area so we're not having to send our trains all the way from Golden through Rogers Pass and down into this area of our network so we'll get a depot for down here as well where's the depot there they are and it'll be a nice easy connection we'll put that on this side of the Trans Canada Highway and then just have a quick and easy connection in there providing we have a decent crossroads which we do and providing we have a decent junction here which we do now we're going to want to signal there just like that and then we can use this depot to get the train for our intercity shuttle now it's only going to be a small service so I'm thinking we may go with the 260 mogul for this and in terms of passenger wagons we're not going to need more than two I shouldn't imagine and we'll just get one train for now we call it it's yellow so we'll colour the train and the wagons yellow as well there we go as always of course now that we have a new train on our network if you would like to claim ownership of the train and have your name lent to the train let me know in the comments below of course if you'd prefer to have your name assigned to a, another train that's not yet been claimed again just make that clear in the comments and I'll do my best to honour any requests that come through of course you might want to throw me a curveball and have your name lent to a station or even a ship that's absolutely fine let me know and I'll do what I can for any requests that get received so now that we have our connection here do we have time to quickly drop a line into Trout Lake as well I think we will do and we have perfect space for a station perhaps just here on the outskirts of Trout Lake so we'll put the station in first of all and then we'll put our track connection in afterwards now I think for this just one platform is going to be enough we can always expand and add extras later but I think for the time being we'll get away with just one and then if we just check the elevation here so we're about 160 in Trout Lake and over in Galena Bay we're about 106 so we've got quite a climb to achieve here but it shouldn't be too bad Now we do want to stay relatively flat initially so we can have a nice junction. And we'll put our quick junction in now. Not the fastest in the world, but as long as it gets into connectivity on the platforms, that's the primary aspect here. And then we can start running this upwards towards Trout Lake. Now this is going to be one almighty tunnel, as we can tell already. And in fact, I just had an idea. What I might do is, given that I was unable to have the spiral tunnel in field as they have in reality, I'm quite tempted to try a spiral tunnel here to get up to the 60 meters that we need to climb. So before we head into Trout Lake, so let's give that a shot. That way we have that nod to reality, but we're not mimicking reality. Let's see here. Yes, that, I think that will work. And then if we allow the tr tunnel to surface, in fact, now we're probably climbing too high there. I think that's going to be high enough to connect into the station, as a guess. And as a t to test that, what we'll do is we'll now keep our track level. So we've emerged from the tunnel and what we're going to do now is quickly get the elevation map and we'll see, <laughs> nope not even close, we're only halfway there, okay. So 
which delete this little stretch and have it continue to climb another 30 meters and then we can run flat. Okay. So we've reached the surface once again. And what we'll do is we'll just allow the game to dictate our gradient on this track. I mean, this is not going to be an express service, so having the gradients and the slowdowns isn't going to cripple the network here. There we go, so at 150 now, so only about 10 meters off where we need to be, which is great. Just make sure we're heading in roughly the right direction, which we now are. This is going to be one almighty train line, I must say, with all the bridges and the tunnels. Well, tunnels, there's not been a single bridge yet. But the train here is a lot smoother than we were just dealing with a few moments ago, so we can have a quick connection in just like that. And we'll accept that. And there we go, we have a spiral tunnel of sorts and that's probably helped us bleed off at about 20 to 30 meters of elevation there which is what we wanted to do and it's made the rest of our track lane efforts a little bit easier and as I said it's that little nod just to reality for the tunnel that we weren't able to construct at field where they have the spiral tunnel in reality as pointed out as I mentioned earlier by coal smoke. Now first we'll set up the line over to Trout Lake We'll not assign any train yet because we're not going to have any passengers over here because it's probably not got a decent enough catchment area as it stands. And you can have that blue colour here. There we go. So in city shuttle from Galena Bay to Trout Lake. We'll get a quick bus service set up for Trout Lake as well. And then we should be good to go. What do we have here? The 442 Atlantic. Okay, that's a, probably... Oh, a, a bit of a game changer for our network so something we're definitely going to want to investigate once we've got this bus line set up so I'm just going to speed through this now so we can have a look at the Atlantic and in fact I'll pick it up once all this is set up and running okay ladies and gentlemen so as you can see I've been set up a trout lake we have our buses on the line we have our quick loop system and we've also activated the line into Trout Lake as well. And for the train, we just went for a 260 mogul with the two clear stories, like we did from Regals, uh, Regal, <laughs> Revelstoke to Galena Bay. Now, obviously, we want to now take a look at the 442 Atlantic train. And as always, we'll use our Rocky Mountain Railway as our test bed. So we'll go ahead and manage vehicles, edit both of them, and we'll do a quick direct comparison between the 10 wheeler and the Atlantic. And let's see what sort of differences we're getting here. So the speed's the same because that's obviously limited by our carriages. However, we have much higher power and much greater speeds. So for our flagship railways, we do want to use the 442 Atlantic trains. So we'll get those now, purchase them. That's going to cost 3 million to modify those. That's okay. And then we want to just colour them both in correctly. So they have the nice striking unique liveries as befitting of our custom name trains like so and then we can go ahead and grab one of them in fact here's the peter oh no it's not that's the intercity shuttle okay where are the rocky mountain railway trains in fact it's going to be much easier to find if i just actually click on one isn't it so our marshals oh he was only here so here we go Fact, let's just hop on board. The 442 Atlantic, a very, very striking train. It looks very nice indeed, very sleek. Looks quite beastly, quite powerful. Definitely our flagship train at the moment, so it deserves to run on our flagship railway. And such high importance trains deserve the best locomotives we have. And obviously, as it stands now, that is the 442 Atlantics. We'll also have a quick look now at the Peter Ray as well, who is just arriving in Sycamus. So, on the extreme edges of our Rocky Mountain Railway. 
Again, looks absolutely marvellous with his own custom paint job there. And he should perform admirably with the new locomotive. We'll just quickly hop on board to have a full look and appreciation on this train here. It's quite a lovely, that's a very postcard sort of picture there, isn't it? You should use that on a poster outside the station. Travel the Rocky Mountain Railway on the Peter Ray. So yes, after that little bit of excitement, I believe this is a decent place to end this episode. I hope you enjoyed it as always. If you did, go ahead and leave a thumbs up and a comment. And if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that as well. It does help the channel grow and it does mean a lot on a personal level as well. If you have any feedback for future suggestions as to what we can do with our network or tweaks or improvements that we could make, again, let them know. I do read all the comments and I do, over time, get around to replying to them as and when I can. I haven't been replying directly for a day or two, but I've had quite a few issues uh, in the real world, shall we say, that I've needed addressing, which has diverted my focus just a little bit, so I do apologise for that. However, I will get around to replying to them all over the next day or so. So all that remains for me to say, ladies and gentlemen, is as always, take very good care of yourselves. Ta-ta for now.